Is there seeds you could still plant this month? But surprisingly, if you have your tinky cap on, you'll be able to notice them. So today, me and my brother Caleb is gonna run you through the deck and share with you what seeds you could still plant. My first crop is one that I'm looking most forward to in the fall for harvest. And it's in fact going in this bed right here, which is the sweet squash. The special variety to me that I'm calling out is the sweet dumpling squash. It's just the best tasting squash that I've tasted. It almost has a sugary, super sweet taste that melts in your mouth like butter. The sweet dumpling squash is also a very fast producer that's very prolific and loaded with squash. Each squash is around one pound and last year we harvested 17 pounds from just the four plants, even though we planted them in July, which was late. If you're gonna start some squash in June, then there's two tips that'll help speed up sprouting. The first thing you could do is soak the seeds for six hours before you plant them. Second is to plant them in a tray and use a heat mat if you have, and the seeds will sprout in three to seven days. This one is optional, but the other one is a must do if you're planting squash in June. Number two is corn. You can grow an early variety that takes 60 to 65 days, like the early sun gold hybrid. And you could also start a variety that takes 75 to 80 days, like the early golden banta. And the way I prefer to plant my corn is to start them in seedling trays, because you could start them earlier and get ahead by two or three weeks. To start them, you want to soak your seeds for six to eight hours so they can plump up and will have better germination rates. And then you want to plant one seed per cell, then cover the seed and water it well. Once they sprout, you can bring them outside so they could get light. And when you transplant them out into the ground, you want to make sure that you space them at about four to six inches apart. So when they grow, they can all be pollinated. Boop, 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 boop. The second method is to direct sow your corn and you can plant them about every four to six inches. But you want to make sure you keep the soil moist all the time while they germinate. And as you can see, I have all my little corn, which I planted six days ago. What is crunchy, you'll get a good snap from it and can be used in the kitchen many ways. Got it? Just wait. And it is beans. They don't actually need a trellis to grow, can be grown in poor soils and anyone could grow them. That's because they can gather their own nitrogen from the air to feed its own growth, which I find is quite cool. But the way I like growing beans is before I plant them, I just soak them for about six hours, no more, or they can become soft. And then I can plant them into seedling cell trays or I can direct sow them into the ground. Now, if you're gonna plant beans in a container or you don't wanna be growing them up a trellis, then it's important that you choose the one that says bush bean on it. Otherwise, you're gonna end up choosing the wrong type of bean. The fourth crop that you must grow is tomatoes. And you can't just plant any tomatoes. You have to plant a determinate tomato variety, not indeterminate like the ones I have in this bed. The indeterminate tomatoes take longer to grow and need a trellis. Whereas the determinate tomatoes take less time and produce the tomatoes all in one go. So that's the tomato type you want to get. The best option though, if you want to still plant tomatoes and get a good harvest, to get some plants from your nursery that are going on clearance. And it will save you a few extra weeks of time starting them from seed. The last final tip for planting tomatoes into the ground is to get a bag of composted manure and make sure to add it around your tomatoes so they can grow faster. Time being precious, there is a better way you could start basil. But first we'll go over the first method. The first method that you could grow basil is starting from seeds. And what I do is I take a tiny cup and I'll sprinkle some seeds into it and then I'll cover them lightly back. You don't want to use a lot of soil because the seeds are very tiny. The second way you could plant them is by cuttings. With some basil from the store you can be able to make your own plants. You'll want to choose a few pieces and then what you do is you take it and remove the bottom leaves and leave just like this. You can put it in a glass of water and they'll grow their own roots in a few weeks at times, which is shorter than if you had start them from seed. But to care for them, you should change the water every two or three days to give them a better chance of success. Let's get right into this next one and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Anytime you sow carrots, since they are hard to sprout, the trick that will give you almost perfect germination is to using this kitchen sifter and only put very little 
Oh man, the soil on top of it. This year, I am testing a new method to grow in carrots. Starting these carrots in egg cartons will make it so that there is no thinning to do because there will only be one carrot when it comes up per cell. And if you're looking carefully, you'll notice that in some of these spaces, I planted more. And that's because if one spot doesn't have any seedlings, then I could take from a spot that has more of it and plant it into this spot. If you're wondering how the carrot will be able to grow, you could see that I made holes in the bottom, so when it goes into my raised bed, the carrot taproot will grow nice, long, and straight. Cucumbers are super easy to grow, and a key tip when selecting a variety is to pick one that doesn't need the female flower to be pollinated in order to produce fruits. Those varieties will be known as partner car pick. This new variety I have this year is the China Jade and it produces giant fruits that are 18 to 24 inches long and it's also a partner carpet cucumber. The way I start my cucumbers is in seedling cell trays but you can also direct sow them if the weather is above 30 degrees during the day because they do not like the cooler temperature. Now there are three types of potato varieties. The early season which takes around 60 to 90 days until harvest. The mid season potato variety which takes around 90 to 110 days and then there's late season variety which is also your storage potatoes and they take around 100 to 120 days. Right now it's the perfect time to get these buds right into the ground so you can get a great summer crop and a bountiful fall crop. Now before you plant your potatoes it's important that you remove every single eye on this potato leaving only one or two and you want to make sure you dig them out like like this and you want to do that with all of them. We do that because we want big potatoes and while also planting it in the ground you want to add a tablespoon to two of bone meal so when they start to produce those spuds they will grow nice and big. So those are the eight seeds that we went through today. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, pack some corn for Tweaker. Goodbye! Goodbye.